So you guys asked for it, so I've continued on. Uh, this is part two. Cadia, Abaddon, and the Western Chaos Imperium. In those dark early decades of the 10,000 years of pain before hope had completely died, the forces of the despoiler made their move as the whole galaxy convulsed in pain and terror. As the Imperium was gutted by the new Devourer's rampages, Abaddon and his 20th Crusade finally, irrevocably, defeated the Imperial blockade around the Eye of Terror. At last, Cardia fell to his forces. Beasts, demons, madmen and monstrous astarts swarmed over every world in the systems surrounding the Terran reality. Though pockets of resistance held out for far longer than expected, each Imperial Bastion, Inquisitorial Fortress and Space Marine chapter were overcome in those centuries of woe. The Imperium was finally overreaching itself, and Abaddon punished it for its laxity, carving out a domain spanning nearly an entire segmentum. Yet, of all the myriad worlds Abaddon conquered, none was more precious to him than the Great Bastion itself Cardia. Cardia was a symbol of his ultimate triumph over the High Lords of Terror, and his defiance of their feeble attempts to contain him. Though initially the world burned in slaughter and barbarism, eventually, Abaddon forged the planet into something else entirely. He repaired the Ravage Cassas, their formidable fortifications admired by Abaddon. He had learned to grimly respect Cardia, as it had thwarted him again and again for millennia before. He remade Cardia into a dark and twisted reflection of its former glory. The despoiler wished to show to all that while chaos was a destroyer and unmaker of things, it could also represent glory and creation. Vast banners and triumphal arches were built by countless toiling, broken slaves. Statues of great horned demon princes and chaos space marines lined boulevards and avenues. The Imperial Aquila remained in view everywhere, but each was carefully defaced with the sign of the eight-pointed star of chaos in place of the twin heads of the eagle. Though most Cadians had been murdered during the first weeks of the invasion, some had survived. He promised them wondrous gifts and power, but demanded that they create him a force like the Cadian regiments of old. Thus, the twisted inhabitants of New Cardia were forcibly made to learn the way of war, from the ancient remnants of the original traitor Cadians. Within a century, Abaddon had crafted a new force within his empire. They were elite, brutal, and utterly loyal to Abaddon, who they worshipped as the voice of the Chaos Gods themselves. Inevitably, following the defeat of the Imperials, the Chaotic Alliance fractured, as each of the Legions and Chaotic Warbands fought amongst themselves. Each Lord or Demon Prince desiring dominance over the other equally arrogant and selfish rulers of their rival warbands. Abaddon was no different, and he joined in the fighting, seeking to consolidate his realm of chaotic madness into a new Dark Imperium. Many of his rivals, the demonic Primarch Sangren and Perturabo in particular, were disgusted that Abaddon wanted to bring order to the bliss chaos of their current situation. They forged an alliance, and declared war upon Abaddon's Dark Imperium. This declaration was a miscalculation on the two Primarchs part. This forced other Chaos Warbands to choose sides. The word bearers, for the most part, joined Abaddon almost immediately, as their visions of a Dark Imperium fitted with his to a certain extent. This brought a considerable number of Marines under Abaddon's control, and the word bearers also brought with them truly phenomenally huge hordes of slave soldiers and cultists. The Black Legion of course sided with Abaddon, as they were to benefit the most from his ascendancy to rule of the chaotic realm. The other legions, utterly decentralized by thousands of years of distrust and civil war, were formed into warbands, attached to no one ruler in particular. They shifted allegiance between the alliance of Angren and Perturabo and Abaddon's camp almost annually during the conflict, although the majority of warbands followed Abaddon at any given time. Also, where most of the human vassal forces controlled by the Angren and Perturabo alliance were simply rabbles of mutants and cultist scum militia, Abaddon had crafted the vast force of the despoiled, whose numbers swelled massively by more and more traitor guardsmen recruits, from either Cardia herself or coming from other planets. Desperate for some military discipline once more, in naval terms the Primarch forces seemed outmatched once more. Abaddon's navy was one third larger than that of Perturabo and Angren who were still reliant upon the Eye of Terror to sustain them. Abaddon was free to seize and command more of the fallen Imperial vessels beyond the Eye. In addition, the Despoiler still had the planet Killer and the remaining Blackstone fortresses under his control. The war was a long and bloody one, like most of the war's chaos ever fights are. Abaddon's forces initially reeled from the violent assault of the two Primarch's furious forces. Attempting to mimic Horus lightning swift assault upon Terror, Angren sent his forces directly for New Cardia, smashing aside blockades and ravaging worlds in his way. Abaddon, though, was no fool. 
he had helped Horus formulate this very strategy, and predicted that Angron would be foolish enough to try it. His navy was seemingly absent when Angron's forces made planet fall upon New Cardia. However, they had been waiting. His vast fleet struck at the Berserker Primarch supply vessels. Unaware of the sudden danger until it was too late, they were decimated. Stranded upon New Cardia, Angron nevertheless reaped a massive toll upon the planet. Yet, weakened by the pylons and the waves upon waves of human blanks abaddon forced to charge at the Berserker, he eventually succumbed. Defeated by a group of the Black Legion's highest rank chosen, combined perfectly with a well-timed orbital strike, which banished Anglin from Cardia. Angron's seemingly foolish charge into a Baton's den, however, had been a mere distraction to give Percherabo time to complete his great work, with the aid of several Dark Mechanicus clans, and a sacrifice of a billion souls to the Soul Forge, the Demon Primarch had completed the Goliath Engine, a vast construction of demonic iron, coiling semi-organic machinery, cursed runes, injected obliterator virus and other hateful devices and technologies were combined perfectly in the Titanic vessel, supplanting even the planet killer in its scale. The demonic machine soon thundered from Perturabo's forge docks, at the head of the largest fleet that he could muster around him. Such was the dark powers crafted within the vessel. It allowed Perturabo to command his battle fleet personally, even beyond the eyes nourishing anarchy. Over the ravaged Nurgle demon world of thrashing Puksha, the two vast forces, one serving anarchy and disintegration, the other merely chaos, clashed for supremacy. Despite the size of Abaddon's fleet, Perturabo was a Primarch and his naval skill was formidable. One of the Blackstone fortresses succumbed to the Goliath engine's massive weapons and crashed into the stagnant demon world beneath them. Thousands of ships clashed together in the sprawling melee in the void. Demonic gunships dueled with multi ex Imperial vessels, and Legion cruisers smashed into other, equally chaotic vessels. Space inside the swirling madness of the eye was further filled with the myriad exchanges of devastating firepower flung between the disparate fleets. At the height of the battle, the planet killer and the Goliath engine clashed. Broadsides, torpedoes, demonic fire, putrid tendrils of warp stuff all were cast against the other in the brutal and blistering engagement. Abaddon's flagship even managed to fire its most deadly guns upon the Goliath engine, but to no avail. In the eye, the ship was immortal, the living machinery of the ship dragging itself together after each exchange. Seemingly bested, the planet killer fled before the might of the Goliath engine. Perturabo, eager for final crushing victory, roared off in pursuit. He caught the extremely damaged planet killer, fleeing in the void between worlds, in the Alirax system. Confident of victory, the Primarch engaged the planet killer and the few escorts that had fled with Abaddon. However, when it seemed victory was finally certain, the tables turned once again. Exiting from the warp a month previously, the Terminus estate and attendant fleet of disgusting Nerglish vessels had lingered in the Alirax system. On the request of Abaddon, upon exiting the warp, the Goliath engine soon came under attack from its eastern quadrant as an entire fleet descended upon it. Later known as the Battle of Bile and Iron, Percherabo's Goliath engine was outmatched. Abaddon had skillfully drawn him away from the eye's demonic sustenance, and weakened the vessel. No longer was it invulnerable. However, it was still formidable, and Typhus lost many vessels in the resulting battle. As the engine burned and collapsed around him, Percherabo raged, and determined to finish it once and for all. The death of Abaddon would end the war instantly. He ordered his surviving Iron Warriors to teleport with him, onto the planet killer, and engage Abaddon in single combat. However, unlike Horus, Abaddon was no fool. The teleport failed miserably, as Abaddon's shields remained firmly up. Percherabo was flung back into the Goliath engine, in time to witness the planet killer fire its doomsday cannon. The warp cannon smashed through the crippled machine, and detonated its demonic heart. Screaming in impotent rage, Percherabo was banished back to the warp. Soon after the battle Typhus withdrew to the eye, taking his fleet with him. When inquired as to why Typhus had added a baton, he cryptically responded, Flowers blue, flowers rot, rot is nothing without order to decay. The pride of both leaders, Perturabo and Angron's alliance soon collapsed, and the more unified forces of the Dark Imperium triumphed, driving their foes into the deepest depths of the eye. Following this victory Abaddon expanded his Dark Imperium into an empire of hundreds upon hundreds of worlds around New Cardia. Oddly enough, many worlds submitted to his rule instantly, even worlds who despised chaos and still worshipped the Emperor. In a time of such horrendous anarchy, any order is craved by the civilized. Ironically, the only thing resembling order in Segmentum Obscurus was Abaddon's Dark Imperium. 
former Imperial worlds hid their signs of worship to the Emperor and openly welcomed the despoiled regiments, who swiftly took over the main PDF centers. Often, there was little to no opposition to this. This was not a religious matter. This was intensely secular. Most governor knew that the only way to survive in the millennium of pain was to be part of something bigger. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. The next part will be up soon. The situation in the East, the Thai Empire. Uh, make sure to hit like, subscribe, all that there good chat, and you know what I mean, you'll see it soon enough. Also, check out the Discord. You might just enjoy it. Thanks. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?